Robert Nograd was here when, uh, when I started in, in September of 1980. I first met Chef Nograd, and I have to still call him Chef Nograd, when I was a student in Charleston. I met Moshe in April 1979 at the Rhode Island Inn. I was 23 years old. He brought us into um, what, the old Friedman building, which was located over there, and we had stadium seating. And we sat and watched him demonstrate every article in the menu. The first time I met Robert was uh, in the late 1980s in Providence. He was the dean as I was attending Johnson & Wales Providence. I had been working for Johnson & Wales maybe two weeks. I was told by the person who introduced me to say, you know, just we got to stop at noon because he has to have lunch at noon. If you don't have lunch by noon, he gets really grumpy. I met Robert at our Charleston campus when he came for a visit and I had just started as a faculty member and our director, Chuck McKenna, was all scared and told everybody, you be on your best behavior. And um, I just did my lecture and he came in in typical Robert Nograd, folded his arms and stood in the back of the, of the classroom. The word came that he was moving down to culinary and everybody was a little anxious. and. Uh, I always remember, I was teaching classical French at the time, and um, it was the day we were doing roast duck. And I had my 20 students around the table, and I was doing a demonstration on how to tie a duck, how to thrust a duck. At the end of the, um, the demo, I said, okay guys, you know, the kids, let's go and let's start production. And all of a sudden, a voice behind me said, no. And I turned around, and this gentleman was pushing through the students, and he came over, and he gently pushed me aside, and he said, and now I will show you the right way to, to trust a duck. They would kind of let, let each other know he was on his way. So the whole thing was, you know, they'd bring the phone to the, the office next to us. No grass on his way. Rocket Bob's on his way, whatever. And it would go through. So he'd go through all the labs, and then he'd always end up in the storeroom. So now the, this particular day, Frank Andriozzi, who was our meat cutter, worked down in the storeroom, and he's and his back to the door and he's yelling, Rocket Bob is on his way! Rocket Bob is on his way! And out of the back, doesn't he hear? Rocket Bob is here! <laughs> Robert had a guest coming in uh, and he asked me to host them for the day. And I uh, got my best suit on and three-piece suit back in those days and put, uh, put on my Johnson & Wales tie and, and walked up to his office to t ask him you know, what was going on and who I was, I was with. And he looked over at my tie and he says, that's the wrong tie, it's the wrong logo. And he reached for a pair of scissors, grabbed my tie and cut it right off. Dean Nograd was the only dean to ever make me cry so far. Culinary Olympics in Berlin. We were to meet with Hans Puskens, the uh, then president of WAX, at the Nation's Restaurant at one o'clock for lunch. Well, there was no Hans Puskens. It was 1.15, 1.20, 1 1.30. Nobody came. Robert, in his usual fashion, pacing up and down and getting all aggravated. Then a few other chefs came and said, you don't know what happened. Hans Puskens died on the train coming up from Switzerland of a heart attack. Robert Nograd, his first reaction, what's the meaning died? We have meeting at one o'clock. As soon as he comes walking in, something, something's up, something's going to happen. I don't think Johnson & Wales definitely would have been able to expand in all the different campuses without Robert Nograd. We were all afraid of him, but we loved him because we really learned a lot. The student always came first with him. There was no detail that was too small. It was like the first one in to work and the last one out. You know, he, he had, his work ethic was amazing, amazing. And he was, everything had to be perfect. He inspired me to teach because he was such a good teacher and mentor for me. Well, we still have that piece of Robert Nograd ingrained into us. And you know, and as some of the old timers transition out, we try to pass it on to some of the young guys. And to this day, I say, his, I say what he says. We're all cooks, and we cook for a living. He's responsible for where Johnson Wales is. He is Johnson Wales University. I mean, everything we do, how we do it, started with him. I mean, he sent the foundation for, for this culinary institution in any form or manner. 
I mean, we improve, we do things, we change. Um, obviously, we have to, but still Robert is, is in every hallway, he's in every kitchen, he's in everybody's head. People make fun of him, they tell his little anecdotes. Robert is alive, he's, he's here, I mean, he's, he's with everybody. When he was presented with the doctorate, you know, when they call you up, you know, the honoris causa, when Robert stood up to go to the podium, the entire graduating class stood up and gave him a standing ovation. I have never, I never saw anything like that with any honorary doctorate. I hope that all our students get to know of him and um, to understand where he came from and how they can also make a difference in so many people's lives. And to me, he was just very special. And he was wonderful, wonderful person. He really loved Johnson Wales. I personally, along with Linda Kender, called him Abba. And Abba in you know, Hebrew means father. Uh, he was like a father to me and Linda. I had lost my dad that year. Uh, and one of the things that I did during that year is I went to the synagogue every day, uh, twice a day, and Robert hadn't stepped foot in the synagogue. You know, Robert wasn't a religious guy. You know, I, I think he was an atheist, actually. I mean, he would tell you that. Um, but he went to the synagogue with me twice a day. And it was about um, what he did for me at that time. Not for him, he did it for me. Robert was a Holocaust survivor, and me being from Germany, it was, it, you know, you get apprehensive sometimes with people, especially that have, have been in the, in the most, most uh, hor horrendous uh, environment like Auschwitz. And um, he had always made me feel very at ease that, you know, what bygones are bygones. He was very, very lucky, and he doesn't hold any grudges against anybody because the opportunities he had. He had piercing gaze, like you could look into your soul, and he had the kind of smile that witnessed the irony of life. Lots of people think he was really hard-nosed, difficult. Um, he was a marshmallow. When you really get to know him and uh, take him outside of the work arena, he was the kindest guy. He brought a lot to us with life experience and made us really appreciate what we have. Excellence. Unique. Passion. Stellar. Absolutely stellar. Awesome. A great man and a great friend. He's a great man. I'll never forget him. Respect. Respect. That's all I can say, I just, I love the man. I, I will never uh, forget this man. And if you can hear us, Robert, rest in peace. We miss you, we love you. So when we were in Europe for a meeting, we had all these CEOs walking in all dressed up, all formal. And Mr. Leutze from FDIC, the CEO, comes up to Mr. Nograd and said, Dean Nograd, how in the world are you? How is life? He said, well, I must tell you, life is like a pair of baby pants, short and full of shit. <laughs>